kids. I'm just trying to bring you some art at home with things that you have around your house. So maybe you've got toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls kind of piling up and your mom hasn't thrown them out. Grab them and let's get started. So here's a really easy thing to do to make a cute little owl. I'm going to show you this a little bit closer. Isn't that adorable? Really simple. Um, doesn't take a lot of work. So we're going to take this toilet paper roll, fold it down in the center. You see we're going to make like a curve on one side and then we're going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. And we'll make these cute little ears, which you can make this into a kitty cat or an owl. But for us today, we're going to use an owl. If it didn't work, just press it in again. Try and even it out. Straighten out your curves. Maybe watch for where the paper towel tube curves, but there you go. All right, so I'm going to set that here so you can sort of see that. A um, couple things you can do, and we're going to start with paint by putting one layer of paint. I'm just using basic acrylics. You can use craft paint. I've got primary colors which are red, yellow, and blue. I've got a couple different brands here but you can use whatever you have at home. I also have some white so I'm going to squeeze those out just a little bit maybe the size of a penny. Uh, I don't think we're going to need a lot. You're going to need a brush, medium sized brush will be good, and maybe a smaller one for some details. You're also going to need a container of water, something like a um, mason jar or peanut butter jar that's been emptied and clean. You can use that, just have that set aside for you. So red, yellow, and blue are going to be our basic colors. So the idea with this owl today is to create the basic design um, so that you can have the face, the eyes, and the wings, and then you guys are going to add your own patterns. What is a pattern? Pattern is a repeated design, so something really simple like dots, um, zigzags, curves, I'm sure you can think of your own ideas. All right, so I've got my paints ready. If at any time I get ahead of you, which is very possible, you can always pause the video and come back and catch up and turn it back on when you are ready. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of blue. Now, these are going to be fun owls, so they don't have to be realistic colors. I'm just going to pick like a light green for mine. Mix it together. Blue and yellow make green. A little bit of white, it's gonna get like minty green, teal, um, just very rapidly painting over the entire owl because the colors will show up much nicer on a painted background. You could even paint it, you know, a tan or um, snowy white for a snow owl, whatever you want, but we're gonna just make them fun today. So, get this quick layer on here, and you can put a little bit of water in your paint if you need to water it down. Craft paint's usually a little thinner, so it'll go on smoother. Um, this acrylic's a little bit thicker, and you know what? It doesn't have to be a perfect match if you need to make more of your color. It's good to have a little bit of variation, too. So. Let's just finish this up, and then we'll move on to the next step. Probably, you're going to want to set down some sort of tablecloth, plastic, or a piece of cardboard to work on top of so that you don't ruin your dining room table. So there's our little owl, first layer. Nice color, minty color. I'm going to just set that aside. Um, put it right here so you can see it, but let it dry 
always put your brush in the water, scrub it around a little bit um, to get the paint off, and then dry it on a paper towel. You can set that aside. So while our first layer of owl is drying, we're going to just talk about what you could do if you don't have paint. You might have some markers, maybe you have um, Sharpies or uh, chalk markers, either of those will work. Chalk markers probably will work the best on the tan owls or toilet paper rolls as they started out. But if you have metallic Sharpies, those will work great. So we're going to put this here and pick up this one, which I found a white paper towel folder roll, and that's gonna be great to show our markers. So <clears throat> how do we make our design? I'm gonna try, try and show you um, backwards, so we'll see how this goes. So you want the fold, the folded edge away from you, See the side, you don't want to be able to see that. So his head, his face is going to go on the side that you folded back, okay? And the first thing we want to do is draw two eyes. So we're going to put two little spots to the center of our eyes. And then we're going to put circles around those. So a small circle. and then a bigger circle. And it's all right if your circles touch. Remember owls have those, their fur, their feathers kind of go out around there. <clears throat> then in between the two eyes, we're gonna put our nose, which really is a beak. It can be a diamond shape, so you can Put two dots, top and bottom, and then draw between there. All right, so that's our basic head and basic face. Now we want to put our wings on. So what I'm gonna do is start a little bit to the side of the one um, eyeball, and I'm going to come down on the side, maybe half an inch from the bottom and draw a curved line. There we go. And then swing that back up to the back. Let's see if we can do it from this side and show you a little bit better. All right, so we're starting from his eye Swinging down to the bottom and back up to the back side. Now that one didn't wind up being as even as the other, but here's the back of the owl, the front of the owl. All right, between the owl's wings, you're going to see his chest, and that usually has a lot of fur and feathers. Um, kind of looks wrinkled. It looks Let's create a pattern. So our pattern can be waves. It could be, it could be um, zigzags. Remember, a pattern is repeated design. So if we look at this, I'm just going to do some little waves underneath. To get the idea of feathers, and then we're going to repeat that pattern, kind of bringing our curved line up into the bottom of the curve. So we're alternating where the curved bellies are. Let me just finish that off. Okay, and you can keep going all the way to the bottom or you can stop. You could repeat the same pattern on the back but let's just try something different. We're gonna try some zigzag. So zigzag is basically pointed up and down, and they don't have to be exact, um, and repeat 
up and down. can go all the way to the bottom. They can get bigger, smaller. Or stay the same. All right. Then if you want to just leave it blank at the bottom, you can do that. What about his wings? You can put some sort of pattern on there. Um, it could be little dots. I'm just using a black marker to draw all of this out. And then I'll go back and fill it in with some pens, Sharpies, or you probably even could use Crayola markers or whatever markers you have on hand. Maybe a texture for his face. Um, it could just be little lines kind of echoing out around his eyes. Okay, so you've got some basics. Now you can color it in. And here's an example. Uh, I think you need some dots in the middle of his eyes because they're a little too wild looking. So metallic markers showed up really nice. Um, some of the other colors not so well. The orange was pretty good. Blue's not so good. You just have to experiment and Hopefully by now you have lots of toilet paper rolls left over. Um, so let's go back to our painted version. And um, before we do that, you might have a paper towel tube that you could have an adult cut it up into sections for you. So you probably want it to be close to the size of what the toilet paper roll was before. So. Um, but you could also make a baby owl, make it a little shorter, squeeze and cut that first line, that first part, and then cut around so that you're not cutting through two layers. But the first cut can go through the two layers. Then you're going to want to even it off a little bit. That could be the top or that could be the bottom where it sits. Same thing with this. Once again, you're going to fold it in. Make sure you're folding in far enough that it crisscrosses the front and the back. So there's our front. Nice curve. You can straighten it out a little bit. Turn it around. Do the same thing on that side. Bend it in far enough that you don't have a hole in the middle. There you go, cute little baby owl. And you can make one taller. This is a little too tall, I think, but you know, cut a little bit off that and that could be one of your owl family. All right, so we are gonna go to the painted version. And we're gonna do something similar. We're not gonna use the markers this time though. Oops. We go back to our paints and start with, I think I'm gonna like stick my fingers in the middle so that I can hold it. You could even use these as a puppet. And we're going to just mix up some color. Let's see, we'll do a little bit of orange. So how do you get orange? It's going to be red and yellow, maybe a little bit of white. And I'm going to put, start with putting your two dots so you can place your eyes and then fill in around that. And this time we're going to paint our circles a little bit larger. Actually paint the largest circle first. Fill it in. Curve around one side. Curve around the other side. And fill in the middle. We're going to let that dry. Remember, rinse your brush off. Scrub it on the bottom. Dry it on a paper towel. If it's still not clean, do it again. And 
don't add a lot of water to your paint because it just will get runny and it won't cover up. Okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna do the centers. Actually, we're gonna do the beak. So I'm gonna use like a red for his mouth. I'm just gonna draw a straight line. And then I'm going to go make like a triangle to the right and a triangle to the left. Ooh, that didn't turn out so good. But I can fix that by just making it longer and looking at what I'm doing. Probably a smaller brush would have helped. Okay, he's got a really big beak. So I think his eyes are gonna need to go a little bit bigger. Remember, if you make a mistake, you can always let it dry, paint back over it, or learn to work with your mistakes. So we can make his eyes a little bigger. Just move him over farther. how his eyes are in proportion to his beak. And we're gonna use a little bit of red, oops, make sure your brush is dry. Red to outline his wings. Starting on the back. You could fill them in if you want them to be a different color than his body. And maybe we'll do that. Or I think I'm just gonna put some texture. So texture is just representing what some, how something would feel um, such as the feathers. So I'm just using little splotches of color, mixture of red and white, um, and staying within the section I outlined for his wings. And I'll do the same thing on this side. So little splotches of color, alternating red and white. And it's just gonna look a little fuzzy, furry, feathery. I can bring that up here too. Okay. All right. Now, let's see, we'll put some little tufts on his ears with this pink color. Maybe wrap it around a little bit. And we wanna do something on the belly, so. How about we go back to the blues? Because we've got green on the belly, so we'll do some sort of pattern here. Depending on the size of your brush, you're not gonna be able to get as fine of a detail. So we're gonna try and do like those swooping curved lines. Um, and I'm making them a little darker blue so that they show up against the background. All right, don't fuss if it's not really precise. Remember, you're just giving yourself the idea that he's got feathers there and we're using the, some patterns to create that. So on the back, you can do the same thing or maybe this time we'll use some yellow and we're just gonna make little stroke marks little lines, vertical lines going up and down. You could take a lot longer on this. Use a really fine brush, um, create really intricate patterns, but I don't want to hold you here too long because I know some of you have fun things to do outside, which I hope you're getting outside and exploring some nature. So, there's our little owl. But he needs eyes. I don't think we're gonna do too much for his head. 
and we'll just brush a little bit around here. And I'm gonna use some red and blue. And when we mix those colors together, what do we get? We are going to get a variation of purple. Um, so that is going to be for the centers of our eyes. Nice dark color. No white has been added. If the color underneath is still wet, you can always um, grab a hair dryer and come back to work on that a little later time. All right, so little dots for his eyes. He needs a little bit more variations or decorations around his eyes. So let's go to this, something darker. I'm gonna make that purple color again. I'm just gonna outline the eyes. You can do whatever you want if you want to put lines and maybe we'll echo the eyes shape with little lines coming out like we did with our markers just to show that his feathers are going in that direction all right I think we'll do one more thing and then we're going to be done I'm going to try to have some videos for you each week so that you have some creative things to do from your own home. Just put a little line on his eyes. You know, there's plenty of things you could do here. Little dots on the um, wings to make more decorations, but look at all the space that there is still to add some decorations. Okay, there's my guy. Isn't he cute? So he's gonna join the little family here. Three little owls, one little baby that needs some work. But that's all the time we have for today. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you'll come back again sometime to Gallery 40, Wendy Stout. Um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, check out our YouTube videos and make sure that you are doing something creative at your house. All right, talk to you later and enjoy your time at home.